Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video I thought we'd have another look at the SV and uh, see what we can do uh, to make some progress with this bike. Looking all right so far, we're, we're almost rideable. Um, but what I wanna do next is I wanna have a look at this tank. Now, as you can see, there's a massive, uh, massive dent in the side of it. And I did consider uh, just getting it repaired. However, um, after a little bit of trawling on the internet, I came across another fuel tank. Um, for an SV valve, which I've got right here in the right colour. Um, and I paid, I think it was, £66 delivered for this fuel tank. Now, it doesn't have a fuel cap, it doesn't have a fuel pump, it's literally just the tank itself. So a bare tank, but that's not drama because I've got all of those bits. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's it's in really, really good condition. The odd, the odd little scratch. Um, but nothing I'm going to lose sleep about. Um, the uh, the decals on the side are different. It's got which I actually I actually think this looks a lot better than the word Suzuki on the side. It's actually from a um, I believe if I remember rightly this was from a 2005 machine. This is a 2004 a late 2004 bike. Um, looking at the OEM suppliers like Fowler's Parts stuff like that, it did list a different part number for the later model compared to this model. Now, I don't know why, I cannot see any obvious um, differences between the two. Um, only time will tell. So what I'm gonna do is put this to one side, whip this tank off, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll um, look at taking the cap off, the fuel pump and all that good stuff, and then swapping them back over. What I have already done is drain the fuel in this completely. I used, um, used my uh, liquid transfer pump to get most of it out and then I ran it for, it probably ran for about 90 seconds before it ran out of fuel. So I know it's uh, completely empty. Anyway, let's, uh, let's crack on. Right then, before we start, what we need to do to pop the seat off, um, it was already undone. The uh, the two bolts are just sitting there in the uh, in the subframe. Um, because what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to swing the tank up in a minute and you can't do that with the seat on. So let's uh, just pop that to one side. Okay, what I'm gonna do first is just remove the two bolts at the front. Take them both all the way out. Okay, right, now we can lift the tank up. Right, put bolts to one side. What we need to do under here is support it first off, just like so, with a bit of workshop wood. Right, we need two remove the fuel uh, the fuel line, the electrical connection for the fuel pump, and then we've got the fuel over, uh, I think the thicker one of the two is the fuel overflow, uh, in case you you know, if you overfill the tank and it just sits inside the rim, that's, what give, that's where it goes. And the other one is a breather, um, so that as the fuel is removed from the tank, air is replacing it, otherwise your tank will try and squash itself in and it'll probably end up looking like that. And believe it or not, I've actually uh, seen on some forums recently with uh, somebody who had actually trapped their breather and the tank had actually crushed in. It's, it's amazing the, uh, the amount of power um, be it the, you know, that the vacuum can produce. Okay, anyway, enough of the chat, let's crack on. So, to get the, to get the fuel line off, there's a little clip here and on both sides you have to push it in in order to push it off. Um, it is very awkward. To get into especially as you've got to get into both sides really but it will come um, there we go tiny bit of fuel still in the line 
oh, I love the smell of petrol. Right, next, the electrical connector, which will just pop apart. I'm gonna find the detent for it. There it is, on the other side. Of course, she's a tight one as well. And that's one thing I am noticing about this bike, is all the electrical connections are really tight. Nah. Right, that's a screwdriver job, I think. Okay, what I'm actually trying to get into is this little tang here. Push it down, but it was really, really, it was really hard to push it down far enough with my finger. So if I just press it with a, there we go. That just came apart really, really easily with a screwdriver. Okay, next, um, the two hoses on the other side. Just pop them both off. They just pull off like. So there's no, there's no, uh, sometimes you get those little weird spring clips. I uh, can't see any handy at the moment, actually. Uh, you, uh, you'll know the kind, it's like a little ring of um, steel, which when you squeeze it together, it opens up. Um, sometimes you'll get those on there, but not in this instance. Okay, right, next thing we need to do is on this hinge down here is remove the bolt. So I'll pull the bolt out and then the tank will be free to uh, be moved from the bike. And to pull that off, it's literally just a 10 mil bot. So what I'll do, swap over from my Allen headed one. And move in, you can just about get to it from underneath the subframe, but there is a lot of stuff in the way at the same time. So I can just, there we are, I'm just about on it. And there we go. There's no nut on the other side, it's captive on the bracket. So, wind her out. The tank won't go anywhere until you physically pull the bolt out anyway, so you don't need to worry about it too much. Okay, right, we're ready. So, move me workshop wood. Get hold of the bolt. I actually put it all the way up. There we go. Had a, had a. You know what I've just found? And I actually thought it was missing all this time. <laughs> that is actually the. Uh, that's what that's for. Comes with the bike. I didn't realise it was actually with this bike. I thought it had been lost a long time ago. I just found it down the side ferry. Awesome, so there you go. Don't need me workshop wood on this anymore. Brilliant, right. Let's get this bolt out anyway. There we go, there's the long bolt. Got you there. There's the tank removed. Really easy, would it? Right. What I need to do next is pop this on the bench because we need to remove the fuel pump and the fella cap. Cracking. Right, first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to remove the petrol cap. Now, um, there's five bolts on this, um, believe it or not, only uh, that one, that one, and that one actually hold the cap to the tank. That one and that one are just for show. It's like that with the majority of uh, bikes that have got these aircraft style um, filler caps. There's generally only three that hold it in. I, to be fair, there may be ones that will use them all, but I've never seen one. It's always been, only ever been three that hold them in. Um, so what I'll do, is pop her open and then um because obviously we need it unlocked in order to be able to get the cap off because otherwise it'd be locked into the into the center sounds like the neighbor's dog's getting throttled one of them little yappy rat dogs right one bolt two bolts To be honest, I'm uh, not overly keen on this carbon effect, like sticky pad thing that's been put on it. It's not really my, uh, it's not really my bag. Um, so I'll probably remove it at some point. Um, that needs a good clean as well. <laughs> Look at the state of it. Yeah, absolutely bogging. Right, 
Okie dokie. So what we need to do is In fact, I can just leave that now. I'm not even bothered uh, about the uh, condition of that because obviously this is the old one. So what I need to do next is just tip her over. We have lost a little bit of, there's still a tiny bit of fuel in there because obviously you're never going to get every bit out. Um, so there is, a, there is a little bit still in there dripping out, but it's, it's petrol. I'm not smoking or anything, so it'll, uh, it'll evaporate. Right, under here we've got like a heat shield. Uh, heat shield off and the next thing we can do is pull the fuel uh, the fuel pump off okay holding the fuel pump assembly into the tank five bolts crack them all off As I said, I'm not worried about scratching the this tank because it's buggered already. So I ain't worried about the other side of this one. But when it comes to the next one, I'm going to uh, give it a nice soft cloth down to try and protect it as much as I can. Now in here there'll be a gasket, and I'm hoping that it's going to be in good condition because. I uh, don't have a spare, and the reason I don't have a spare is because I was prepared to pay what Suzuki expected me to pay for a round piece of rubber with some holes in it. So I'm hoping that this one will be in good fettle. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pay the man uh, the stupid amount of money that he wants for his rubber piece of uh, gasket. Now that one at the back there has got the, uh, it's like a, a cable clamp thing. Weirdly enough, there wasn't any cables in it, but that's not to say there isn't supposed to be, so it might be worth looking when I um, put it back on. Okay, pull the fuel pump out, and there we go. And that is a fuel pump assembly. Now, I'm not gonna bother um, stripping this down or replacing any components in here because it was all working perfectly fine. Um, one thing I will point out, actually, is this here is a, um, uh, it's a thermistor and what that does is it, um, that gives the uh, the bike the signal for the fuel level and it basically works on the principle of um, the, the fuel is cold and when the fuel level drops below the surface you know below a certain amount i.e below the thermistor so that the thermistor is now in the air it it detects difference in the temperature puts a little light on and tells you you're running out of uh, running out of fuel Pretty, pretty simple, but really, really effective. Sometimes you see them with the like a coat hanger with a with a float on the end. That, um, and I think, if I remember rightly, it's a Rio stat, but I, I, I'm not 100 percent certain. Um, I think it's called a Rio stat, and it's uh, basically a winding with a with a with a like a, a striker that goes up the side. And obviously, depending upon where it is in the winding, is determined by um, it determines its resistance because obviously the longer the wire the higher the resistance the shorter the wire the lower the resistance so yeah as it winds up and down it detects the resistance and that's it, again it does the same a similar thing and puts a light on but that's um probably more reliable um in all honesty because it doesn't get gummed up with uh, with fuel because fuel does gum things up especially these little rheostats i've got the same sort of problem on my um on my five series because that's got that type of uh, fuel sender and it is really gummed up Right, going back to what I was saying about the gasket, uh, here is said gasket, and it's not, I, I, I don't know why, but in the picture I thought it was flat and it had holes in around the uh, screws, but it's not, it's a rubber o-ring and it's absolutely perfect, it's still nice and squishy, and uh, yeah, that'll, uh, that, that's going to be fine, so I'll put that to one side as well. Right. This uh, I don't need the I don't need the hinge because the the new one's already got a hinge on it. I don't know if it's got the but yeah I think it has. Uh, yeah I think we're good. We'll uh, we'll find out in a moment. Uh, I think the bushings at the front are all good as well. So what I'm going to do is push this to one side and go and get the uh, go and get the new one. Right then, now we're ready to assemble. So I've got a nice soft cloth down and uh, I've put some cloth over my vice so I don't bang it against it. So uh, hopefully I will uh, minimise any scratches to the top of the tank whatsoever. First thing I want to do is I want to um, I want to fit the rubber seal, 
Now the Suzuki manual says use Suzuki Super Grease. Um, Suzuki Super Grease is basically going to be red rubber grease, um, but probably about three times the cost because it says Suzuki and Super on it. Doesn't need much anyway. All we're doing is just keeps it nice and supple. Right, let's get there and there. Well, it fits. It, it fits. Um, you can feel it sits proud of the surface as well, so you know it's gonna. You know it's going to cause a nice seal. It does actually tell you in the manual to replace it, um, but with a bit of uh, a little bit of grease, I think we'll be fine. Um, I'm just not. Uh, I'm not prepared to pay the amount of money that Suzuki wanted for what is effectively just a piece of rubber. Right. This one at the back is the one with the cable clamp. Okay. To get him started. There we go, that one's got it. Get them all in first before we uh, before we tighten any of them down, because otherwise if you tighten one down, you'll find that one of the holes won't line up, and then you'll uh, have to undo them again. Alright, there'll be a torque spec for these. I'll uh, check in the manual and then grab my torque wrench. Right, these are uh, only done to 10 newton meters, so it's not a life changing amount of torque. In fact, I'll use that if I don't need to. Okay, into that one. Yeah. And then what I'll do is we'll do them up in a star pattern. Days. Right, I'm happy that they're all good and that there'll be a good seal. I'm pretty confident in that seal to be fair. Right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to whip her over and then refit the fuel cap. Right then, let's turn her over. Needs a good clean out, so I'm going to. Uh, it's pretty bogging in there. I'm going to get get me uh, get me wipes in, give all that a good clean out before we uh, before we fit the cap. Right, let's turn around so you can see easier. There we go. We're giving it a good clean. There's like some weird staining in the inside, but it's probably from uh, from fuel because it does like to leave a little bit of a residue. Okay, so uh, what I'll do, um, pop this in. Place. Get the bolts in there. Oops. Oops. One in. There's no seal under this section of the cap because the seal is on the part that actually clamps into the tank when it's locked. I don't know if there's a torque for these, but it's not going to be ultimately quite of course. I'm just going to give them a little nip up. Well, even though I didn't undo them, I'm just going to make sure these these two are tight. They, do, they can be removed. Uh, yeah, they're nice. Right. Okay. So. Is the fuel tank ready to go back on the bike? That's the uh, so that's the new fuel pump. Well, not the new fuel pump. We've taken the fuel pump out of the old one, the cap off the old one, and uh, put them on the uh, onto the new tank. 
Uh, there's a tiny little stone chip there which has got a tiny bit of rust behind it. I might give that a little treatment and then uh, a little touch up just to prevent any uh, prevent it getting worse. This is definitely coming off. This is horrible. Um, it's, it's only half stuck on the bloody on the bloody tank anyway. But I'll get a bit of heat with a heat gun on that and it'll melt the glue. And then uh, I'll just remove all the glue residue and then hopefully it'll be fine. Right then, next job. Let's get back on the bike. Right then, all I've done, I've got the bike. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the tank even, just sat on the bike. What I need to do first is fit the back hinge. What I did was I just pop the bolt back into its location. So what I'll do, get that lined up as best I can and then pop the bolt through. There we are, I think we're there. Get the tool on it, and then, yeah, we're in, we're in. That's up to touch, should give it a little nip up. Nothing too strenuous, it doesn't have to be two white knuckles or anything. Right, I can do, I can use my little, now I know it exists, and that I've got one. Use my little tool, look, look at that. That badger, right. What I've got to do next is refit the breather hose and the overflow hose. I'm going to refit the fuel pump connection. And then the fuel hose. Now, this likes to turn around in all sorts of directions. It'll only fit in one orientation so that these little projections on the side come out of these holes. So if it's not lined up, she won't go in. So make sure it's lined up. And then it'll be a case of just push in till it clicks. Just like that. Right, as you can see, I've forgotten something. Right. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that I've totally omitted to fit the, uh, the heat shield. So guess what? I've got to take it all off again. Right, here we are again. Heat shield. Let's, let's try and put her on, shall we? Instead of uh, just chinning it off. Okie dokie. It hooks around all these gubbins in here. on the wrong way it was the other way around that's why the heat shield's not going on let me twit that man this is what happens when you don't pay enough attention when you take things off so that would have been like that who says I'm infallible eh? nobody says I'm not Right, let's try again. Blimey, third time lucky. All this for a flaming heat shield. Pop through there. There. there we go, we're there. Ta da Right, let's get back on the bike again. There we go. Right. Connect everything up again. Breather. Overflow. Fuel pump. Electrical connection. Fuel line. 
pressure her on until she clicks home. Just like so. Right, here we are, we're back where we were. Top job. Right. Next thing we need to do. Take out me, my little tool. Well made up with that, by the way. Bet they're about a tenner on eBay. Okay, right then. What I need to do, line up the mountings. Get them started. There's a lot of dirt down that fork leg. Look at the state of that. Yee. I think what I'm gonna do at some point is pull these forks apart, give them a good, uh, good service anyway. I wouldn't be surprised if this has still got the original fork oil in it. Very, very likely. Right. I had a little Allen socket somewhere and I've probably left it over on my bench. Yep, still on my torch. There we go. Job done. All I need to do is remove this, but I can sort that out later. And I think you'll agree that's a pretty good, pretty good result. A couple of little tiny scratches and knocks on it, but a lot better condition than the uh, than the tank I took off. It, yeah, it's presentable, and with a good bit of polish, it'll look uh, it'll look quite nice. And. As I said before, I do actually quite like the, you know, the Suzuki S as opposed to the Suzuki, it looks quite minimalist, we'll call it minimalist. Right, what we need to do is pop a bit of fuel in, make sure she starts. So I'm going to grab my fuel can and uh, we're going to fire it up. Okay, right, got the key. It's a little bit stiffer, I might have to do uh, I have to look at that, it needs a bit of a... Yeah, it's, it's the lock, it's a bit dodgy. It was, I think it was like that before to be fair, but I didn't really pay that much attention, but obviously because I've been messing around with it today, it's... Yeah, it's uh, needs a bit of a wiggle to get it open. Anyway, I digress, let's get a bit of petrol in. I'm not going to put too much in because I'm, uh, I'm nicking this from the wife's lawnmower stash. Just gotta do the lawn. So I'll stick a litre in or so. That'll do it. Yeah. Right then, so turn the ignition on. We should hear the fuel pump prime. Hopefully you heard that. that. That squealing noise you heard was probably a bit of air being pushed out. What I'll do, we'll turn it off and on again. Yeah, there's probably a bit of air in there. Right, let's start her up. What I'm gonna do now is just have a look under the tank for any leaks. Make sure there aren't any dripping all over the place. that a, uh, a satisfactory job now um, yeah as you can see it, it's made it makes a hell of a difference just having a, a, a decent tank on there I um, just want to come around and have a look from this side actually yeah it's pretty uh, pretty swish and um, to find one at the price I paid for it in the right color was uh, was a bit of a touch now obviously as mentioned in previous 
I mentioned in previous videos that I may well change the colour anyway, so it may be academic. However, if I do decide to keep it this colour, having the, the right colour tank was a bit of a boon. Anyway, um, thank you for stopping by guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, probably draw it out a little bit because obviously I had to set the tank off again and uh, do the job properly instead of doing it right the first time. But I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed it enough to subscribe, give me a like, and hopefully see you all again for the next video from Kev Shed. Thank you very much, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye now.